Okay, so with that, let me get started. So this is the, um, I guess I'm just gonna call it dipole lecture, because <laughs> that's what it should be. And biggest reason I want to do this uh, dipole lecture is that for now, this is an electric dipole lecture, but later on, a lot of this can be repurposed for magnetic dipole lecture. Uh, some, a lot of the things that we'll be bringing in in the context of electric dipole will still apply for a magnetic dipole. So <laughs> that's a really the reason it's important. So as a reminder of something that you have seen, a dipole is um, like something that you have seen before. It's an arrangement of a positive charge near a negative charge. They are of the same magnitude, so on net they add up to a neutral charge. So it has a charge plus Q, M minus Q. And the other parameter that's important in determining characteristics of dipole is the distance between the two charges. Uh, let me use, uh, do I want to use D? Mm. It's, it's, sorry, I'm just uh, cycling through some of the letters that are sometimes more standard. Let me use D. I, I think that'll take, uh, not the ideal choice, but let me use D. <laughs> um, so if you have uh, two charges uh, separated by distance D, then um, we can define something that's called uh, electric dipole moment and electric dipole moment, <laughs> if I'm remembering, this is where I get, I want to use the letter P, I don't know if that's the common letter. Um, so electric dipole moment can be defined as the charge times the distance of a separation between the charge, uh, two charges. And there's a way to define this as a vector and or yeah, electric dipole moment is a vector, um, charge being scalar, so you can associate D with the vector quantity. But uh, for the purpose of today, I won't get into that formal uh, description. I'll just, uh, and I probably won't even use electric dipole moment, so let me scratch that. And just to talk about electric dipole um, as something that you have seen before. So when you have arrangement of charges like this, you know what the electric fields look like. That's the context where you have seen electric dipole before. Um, as we are introducing the electric field lines, you've seen this as a way to illustrate how electric field lines come out of the positive charge and go into the negative charge or go out into infinity. So you have seen that. Now, one of the importance of electric dipole is it, it's, it's a how common it is. So you have been seeing electric dipoles all over the place without any explicit reference to it. I think uh, I can point you to the, um, the most uh, prominent, uh, most uh, noticeable one. Uh, that's uh, one of the electrostatics demos. So this is one of my favorite electrostatics demos, which is why I call it most prominent without supporting that, um, supporting that claim in any other way. Um, so one of the demos I lo love is the, the bouncing taps demo. And here's the kind of mystery or the thing about this bouncing tap demo, which is, at the very beginning when we started, so somewhere around here, so I'm going to be turning on the Van de Graaff generator. Now, before I turn on the Van de Graaff generator, this aluminum tab, it's electrically neutral. It doesn't carry any charge. Now, as I turn this on, oops, what is it doing? And you see that uh, let's see, oh, it's, uh, yeah, that's why I stopped it. <laughs> Over the next less than five seconds, you are going to see this aluminum tab attracted to this sphere. And the natural question is how? This tab is not charged. If it doesn't carry any electric charge, how could it be electrically interacting with anything? 
It's because of polarization. It, uh, I hope you remember reading about something relating to this in, you, in your reading and other materials, um, since I didn't explicitly call attention to that. Let's say if this sphere is being positively charged, then as a result of those positive charges, which have uh, outgoing electric fields, these electric fields polarize the aluminum tab so that the aluminum tab has negative charges or preferentially on one side and the positive charges on the other side. And this is one example of a dipole arrangement. It's an electrically neutral object which has one charge on one. It has a charge separation. And this is a very common way um, we see electrical interaction between everyday objects from something macroscopic like aluminum tap to something microscopic like a molecule, a polar molecule, or even regular, I don't know, covalent ball, but I'm not a chemist. Um, even those when it's placed under an electric field, there can be an induced dipole and that results in electrical interaction. So because the dipole is a very common way we model electrical interactions, especially when something doesn't carry on a charge. So it, it, that's why it's such a, it's a, such a common electrical object and understanding it well is, it's useful for applying what you learn in this class for what you might be asked to do in other classes, chemistry, biology, whatever.